it was happening again. From, yes. Yeah. And it was like, oh, I was up all night pacing back and forth looking through the curtains and yeah. all sorts. Yeah. yeah. I thought when they come in this room in a minute, I'm going to grab that glass. I'm going to stab him in the throat with it. Yeah. I thought I thought like someone was going to attack me. Like yeah. I never felt safe. Yeah. Wherever I was. Yeah. And what, um, what, what, what those would you say were the main catalysts that started? I've got to fucking handle this. Uh, what was the first thing that you did after so the doctors? After, after that, yeah, I stayed up for three days. <laughs> Oh, Mr. Tyson Fury, welcome to Paul Malt Talks Shit. What a name for a podcast there. Eh? What a name for a podcast. <laughs> and listen, it's I'm really happy to be on this podcast this morning with somebody who's bubbly personality and a character like myself. So where do we fucking start? Dude, let's start with, let's, let's get right into it. How's, what I want to know is how's lockdown been for you? Lockdown was absolutely amazing, to be fair. Right, you've got to take a positive from every negative. Now, imagine you're in my shoes, right? You've just become a two-time heavyweight champion of the world. You've just absolutely fucking smashed Deontay Wilder. Yeah. And you're feeling Stop. like a gym. <laughs> Come yeah. on! You're feeling like a boss. Yeah. Uh, are we in a church here? And I'm sorry. <laughs> we are actually in a church. <laughs> the church is up there. Hi, we are. God forgive me for what I've just said. <laughs> in a church, in God's house. It's a bit of a place to have a recording it studio. Is, it is, In the bottom of a church. It is. It? And you've got Amazing. nutcases like me effing and blinding. <laughs> um, yeah, so I've just beat up Deontay Wilder, for yeah. a better way of putting it. Yeah. Uh, come back, um, within a week, the world ended. And I thought, you know what? Were you at home when the world ended? Yeah, I was at home. Yeah. Yeah, I, got, I flew back from Vegas on Monday. I bought box Saturday, flew back Monday. Come back. Um, so it was almost a little bit of a blessing for me because... I'd absolutely been bombarded with press, yes. media things to do and yes. all that sort of stuff. And I wouldn't have wanted to do it because yeah. I wanted, after 12 weeks in the training camp, you want to come home, relax, get your energy back, recover yeah. from your cuts and bruises. Eat, eat. And just Yeah, eat and just get back to normal, be a normal person, yeah. be the dad that I've missed out three months on, mm -hmm. husband, father. Were you away for that training camp? When I was away for that training camp, yeah. So I come back and it was all stopped and I was like, right, I'm going to get my head on here because I can keep fit, I can do everything that I want to do yeah. and not be bothered and my to do a million things. So it was like, is this actually happening? Yeah. yeah. So anyway, I didn't think it would get the way it got. Yeah. I was like, well, they're going to shut down, they're going to do this, what was it going to be? Yeah. No experience on the matter, like everybody yeah. else. Yeah. Um, so I thought, right, I'm going to have a running machine dropped off to the house. So I, I phoned my man up, Spence, and he, he dropped some weights and a running machine off, right? Yeah. Um. So I had all my training gear in my front room. Paris was going nuts. Um, <laughs> but then, after about a week of training, I said, right, we're going to do something positive here, Paris. Yeah. We're going to do a morning workout for the entire duration of the lockdown yeah. period. Yeah, I've seen those. Uh, we're doing it six days a week yeah. for 12 weeks. Yeah. Me and her going at it, arguing like cats well, The kids dog. were coming in and that, kids right? Kids were coming in, yeah. telling me to F off and all sorts, <laughs> yeah. It was absolutely ridiculous, but yeah. it was real life, and people liked it, and they were relying on it every morning and yeah. tuning in and working out. Yeah. It was giving me something to get up for in the morning and yeah. me keeping me positive. Yeah. Also, I was influencing others and yeah. keeping them positive, so yeah. it was a really good win-win situation for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I got a good 12 weeks of training in, flat out training five times a day. Oh, I was really? like a lunatic. Yeah. And about a week off, I went straight into training at home. I was doing, getting up. I was doing an hour minimum circuit in the morning with yeah. Paris. Then I go for a three mile run, and then in the afternoon I do weights yeah. for about forty five fifty minutes. Yeah. And then straight after that I go for another three mile run. And then at night time I was bike riding twenty mile. Me and her. Shit, dude, I love that. So it was absolutely ridiculous. And would you say? I mean, obviously I've read your book and that. Would you say that that training is the shit that keeps your shit straight? One hundred million percent. The yeah. training for me. Is not. I don't train to have muscles or a great body because yeah. I'm never going to have that. Yeah. <laughs> Let's face yeah. it. But I train to keep my mind mentally and physically and emotionally fit. Yeah. And the training, the lockdown brought me in Paris like so close together because we were training together, bike riding together, doing yeah. everything together. Yeah. And it was really good. It was a good time. Yeah. Drove me nuts with the kids being off school. Oh, dude. Absolutely. I've gone stir crazy. Have you? Have you been I'm, homeschooling them or anything like that? Or yeah, they was doing their schooling thing online, weren't they? All yeah. the kids and that. My yeah. kids did it for two weeks, and it ended up in a fight every day. So I just let them. Yeah. What I ended up doing was just letting them learn about what they wanted to learn about. Yeah, well, my two bigger kids. Yeah. 
a 10 year old and an eight year old yeah. they were doing the online school and yeah. they were doing it well yeah paris was doing it with them on the little ones they're only like one two and three yeah, yeah so yeah. he's just started nursery this yeah. year yeah um are the older ones youtubing yet are they another youtuber oh they're into all is TikTok it talking youtube and all the stuff is they it, have they got you on fortnite yet are they not on that? They're not on that. Are they not? No. Just... That's that's when the, that's when the uh, that's the fun part. Dad, play Fortnite. Dad, come and play no. Fortnite. Dad, come me, and play I've, Fortnite. I've got me, but me, me boy, me oldest boy is eight. We just play this this game. It's called. Um, it's like a crossover of Street Fighter. It's got all the old Street Fighter characters right, in yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, uh, the Capcom. And oh, the Capcom, Capcom. Capcom. I've seen it. Uh, Capcom Capcom's Universe or something. Something yeah, yeah, like yeah, that, yeah. yeah. And yeah. you can fight all the old, old Tekken fighters and stuff against oh, each other. It. Dude, now we're talking about games. That. I love that you're in that new fucking UFC game. Yeah. Dude, that is so cool. It's cool. It's yeah, cool it's very fucking that, cool. And what, um, have you ever thought about that? UFC? Yeah. Yeah, a million times. Have you? I've, I've offered to do a fight with them. Have you? Yeah, many times. I've, I've I spoke to Dana quite regular. Really? Actually, we used to be like at each other's throats. I'd be calling him a bald-headed twat and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When yeah. you're giving me the same. Yeah. And um, he's really, really sound, cool guy. Yeah. Um, got to know him over the last year or two. Yeah. And a uh, really nice fella, yeah. Smart guy as well. Smart guy, made yeah. a lot of money, done very well yeah. for himself. I think he might be a bit of a savage himself, actually. I've Down to earth. Killer. I've heard Down he's a killer on the mats as well. I don't know. Yeah, I, th I think he, I think he's a black belt, isn't he? Is he yeah, a black I think, belt in jiu-jitsu? he might be a black belt in jiu-jitsu. Well, well, he's not a guy to tangle up no. with, him, is he? <laughs> no, he's not, no. But uh, yeah, he, uh, I spoke to him on the phone. He said, would you be interested in doing this, going on the game, the UFC game? Yeah. I said, yeah, would be interested. Yada, yada, yada. The next thing I know it. I'm all on the game. Dude, that's crazy. So it sent me the programme, the video thing to watch it, man. Yeah. And the kid, would you let the kids on that? Yeah, the kids are going to go on it. You know, would you are. let your kids box? Yeah, if they want to. Would you? I think it's inevitable, really, isn't it? Like yeah, Tyson Fury's yeah. kids yeah. are going to want to box, yeah. the boys. I want to ask you that because a friend of mine, can, do you remember a boxer called Tony Jeffries, Jaffa? Yeah. He, I was talking to him about it and he, well, he's got three girls and he was like, he wouldn't let his... He wouldn't let his well, kids box. I was training my daughter, Venezuela, oh, from being like four years old to yeah. like nine, yeah? yeah. And she was really good. Yeah. And then all of a sudden she got to nine, ten years old and yeah. she doesn't want to be a boxer anymore. Yeah. She wants to be a dancer and a gymnast and everything else that goes with it. Uh, my daughter's the same. She started jujitsu and now she wants to be a YouTuber. Oh, there you go, yeah. Or a policewoman two days a week. That's a thing. Dad, I want to be a YouTuber, but I'd like to be a policewoman two days a week. Well, that's the thing today, isn't it? Everyone wants to be a YouTuber, don't they? It's insane. It's like money for free, isn't it? It is. Money for all rope, really. It is. Videoing it is. yourself doing daft things. <laughs> that's exactly... Dude, that's exactly... It's a dream it job, innit? It is. I'm going to go slide down a mud valley, video it, and I'm going to get a million YouTube videos. Well, there video you got people on, like... We, we were, we've got a couple of lads from Jory Shaw coming and who are fighters, and some of them just get paid for getting pissed. That's good, a, they're, they're, a good job, innit? Like they're getting paid for going out, getting pissed and shagging. It's, you know what I mean? It's crazy. All right, dude, let's get down to... Um, they haven't got any jobs filming, have they? Go in. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I put a word in. I put a word in. I might have to change your accent. Yeah. Could call it Morecambe Shaw. Yeah, could, could be, call yeah. it something like that. You call, call it Morecambe Bay. Yeah, Morecambe Bay would be really cool. All right, dude, so let's um, let's get down to the stuff that I really want to impact people with, which is this mental health story, this mindset story, because yeah. so many fucking guys, and I deal with, we deal with thousands of them every week who are struggling. Um, why do you think that is? Why do you think people just struggle so? Especially guys, because we work with guys and we mainly guys listening. Yeah, mainly, mainly guys, um, they struggle, I think, from, well, any age really, but the average age for the mental health problems. More deaths caused by mental health problems from 18 to 35 than any other cancer or anything. Yeah. Um, so I think mainly guys because... We all think it's a cliche thing, oh, if you, if you talk about your problems like mentally, you're a weak person yeah. or people's going to think you're a weakling or a wimp or something yeah. or you're soft as shit or whatever. Yeah. But, you know, I was of that person. I was of that opinion as well. Even worse for you, though. Even worse for me. I was heavyweight champion of the world. Not if it, Just growing up, I come from a, a rough family who were fighters and boxers and all that. Yeah. Um, and it was like, oh... You never show any weakness. Yeah. Never, 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 never. Yeah. So for when I opened up about it in 2016, that was like the biggest hurdle for me that I could ever come across. 
because to my family, I was like a superhero, like oh yes. Tyson. He never, yeah. never goes wrong with him. Yeah. Never gets a cold. Never gets injured. Yeah. If he does, he just battles on through it. He's people kind of people kind of yeah. come to you for when they have problems. Yeah, when they're having problems. Yeah. And, I, I I bottled it up for a long, long time. All my life, I'd suffered with anxiety and depression, mm-hmm. um, but it, it was getting real, real bad, and mm-hmm. I couldn't bottle up anymore. And I exploded and had a mental breakdown. Yeah, ended up in the hospital. Um, yeah. Just absolutely, I thought I was going to end up in a padded room. Yeah, me and too. That's gospel truth. Yeah, me too. Um, the only place I ever thought I would be is never mind boxing again. I was twenty eight stone. My life was over. And I was very, very, very mentally unwell. Yeah. I was thinking, I'm going to go end up in a padded room. I'm going to end up in a padded room. Yeah. Because I, I definitely thought I'd lost it, lost yeah. control, I'd lost the mind, gone. Yeah, and especially, and this happened for me because I was, I was diagnosed bipolar, and I thought I was going to be in those meds like forever. Yeah, well, forever. I'm uh, bipolar disorder. They call yeah. it now, don't That's they? Me, Manic yeah. depressive. Yeah. 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 Superpower, by the way. Yeah. I think it's a superpower. Well, it's uh, I had a, an anxiety attack, a severe one, and I'm yeah. telling you, I won't wish it. I mean, what a no, nightmare. Nah. nah. Dude, what's the worst one you've had? I've only ever had one proper anxiety attack, yeah? Mm-hmm. I thought I was having a heart attack. I thought I was having a stroke. Yeah. I lost my vision. Yeah. I was preparing to die, hit the floor and drop and dead. Really? And I was 100% I was going to die. It was imminent death. Yeah. That was the fear factor. Yeah. Dude, I tried to get off a plane. And I'm, at that moment in time, all I could think of was my kids growing mm. up with no dad. And how stupid I've been over the last few years. Mm. And here I was, I was begging God for forgiveness before I was just going to yeah. go bomb. Yeah. But like, I'm thinking, I'm not dying here, what's going on? Yeah, I'm yeah, not yeah. hitting the floor, yeah. and I'm definitely having a heart attack. Yeah. Rushed to the hospital, yeah. A&E, I said, right, test me. I said, there must be drugs in my system. Yeah. I said, someone's drugged me, or I said, something's happened to me. I've had a yeah. heart attack or a stroke. Yeah. They said, calm down, put me on machines and that. Nothing in your system. You've not had a heart attack, but you, you, if you don't calm down, you're going attack. to. Yeah. He said, you've had a, an anxiety panic attack, yeah. like an anxiety attack with a paranoia attack too. Because yeah. I kept thinking that people were going to come and kill me yeah. and drug me and all the yeah. divvy things. I've watched all these million um, things on the TV and yeah. that, yeah? yeah? You put them all into play in your own mind, yeah. how it's all going to go down. Yeah. I was accusing my wife of... Setting me up to get murdered. Yeah. And, oh. Dude, and isn't it insane how that can just come about, but yet when you're about to step on stage in a ring with, like, at the time, the baddest man on the fucking planet, yeah. and you're not, there's no nerves. No, there's no nerves. Isn't that insane? But it got to that point, and it all exploded. Yeah. And I thought to myself, I need help. Yeah. I can't do it on my own. I've yeah. never had any help all my life. I never never once saw a doctor about it, nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Ever. Yeah. I just thought I would just have it like mood swings or be up and down. Yeah. That's what it was. I thought yeah. like that's life. Yeah. But when I went to see the doctor, they they said, Oh, take these pills, give me like these bag of pills and at first I was like, I'm not taking no pills. Mm-hmm. My granddad was addicted to all them mental health pills mm-hmm. all his life. Mm-hmm. Took them till the day he died. Mm-hmm. Um so I'm not taking no pills. So when I lulled there, I thought it was all right, yeah. yeah. After a couple of weeks, stayed at home, tried to regroup. Yeah. I thought, all right, I can't get away. Yeah. Let's go. We went away somewhere, south of France or something, yeah. yeah. Booked a nice hotel, me and Paris and the kids. Yeah. I got to the hotel and I thought, oh my God. It was happening again. Come, yes. Yeah. And it was like, oh, I was up all night pacing back and forth, looking through the curtains and all yeah. sorts, yeah. yeah. I thought when they come in this room in a minute, I'm going to grab that glass. I'm going to stab them in the throat with it. Yeah. I thought I thought like someone was going to attack me. Like yeah. I never felt safe. Yeah. Wherever I was. Yeah. And um, what, what, what those would you say were the main catalysts to start? I've got to fucking handle this. Uh, what was the first thing that you did after so the doctor? After that, yeah, I stayed up for three days in a row. Like I was like, I couldn't go to sleep. I'd be on the pillow and my mind wouldn't switch off. Yeah. Just kept. I was begging for sleep, and I remember Paris had the pills in a bag. Yeah. I said, "Give me those pills right now." <laughs> <laughs> Put me to sleep. She, she gave me two free pills, whatever he was, yeah. whatever he said. I yeah. just went boom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Woke up the next day so happy, like I'd been to sleep for the first time in three days. I love it. And I was like, I said, I can't do this. Every day was like a year. Yeah. I booked for like ten days. I said, we've got to go home three days. I said, I've got to go back home. I don't feel safe here. I've got to yeah. go back home. Yeah. Left, flew yeah. back home, lost everything, hotels, flights, lot, flew back. Yeah. And then I thought, right, this is it. I've got to go and see this doctor properly now. Mm-hmm. And I went and started seeing this um, psychiatrist. 
psychiatrist mm. person. I don't even think they call them over that over here, do they? Oh, it's like psychiatrist, psychologist, psychotherapist, yeah, whatever. All of those, yeah. Uh, so I went and seen this guy, and I thought, this is not going to be for me, this. Yeah. Because this guy's going to go and tell all his pals down the pub later mm, what, yeah, I'm, uh, yeah, what I'm yeah, telling yeah. him, yeah. all my problems, and I'm going to get ripped to pieces. Yes. That's going to be my done. Yes. So I thought, I'm not telling him anything. Yeah. Just going to go there and listen to what he says. Yeah. When I got there, I, I needed to speak to the fella, and he yeah. was talking to me, telling me all these things that was going on and mm -hmm. why I was feeling like this. He showed me a graph of how I was up and down all the time, how a normal person's just like that, yeah. and how my life was like that. Yeah. Yeah. And Tyson, how much do you think? My wife wanted me to ask you this question because obviously our wives have to deal with a lot of shit. Yeah. Right. And. When my first meltdown happened, when I'd sold the business, I moved to Marbella, four bedroom villa, private pool, but I was fucking miserable. And she's of the opinion that when we get these, these are highs, right? So it's for you, being Klitschko was a huge high, yeah. and it's followed by a huge low. Do you, think, do you think that having those highs, cause you, there's got to be some anxiety in the camp and that, do you think that causes part of the, With every high, what goes up must come down? With every high, there's a massive low. Yeah. That's a guaranteed fact. Yeah. The higher the high, the lower the low. Yes. Um, but now I've sort of learned to, to manage and maintain yeah. the lows. Yeah. So I can, How are you doing that? Well, after every massive high, obviously the wild, they're winning all these fights and stuff, then it takes me about a week to get back to normal. Yeah. Um, and what normal consists of, as soon as I get back into routine straight away. Yes. Like I, I'm not one of these people who's going to go and go to LA or wherever for a month and all this, like chill out after the fights. I've got to come back straight off that plane, straight to training, yeah. straight to doing my tip runs and yeah. looking after the kids' school runs and yeah. all that. Yeah. That keeps me sane. And as long as I yeah, do I love that, that you're doing tip runs, by the way. Yeah, I've got to. Who, that she's not going to do it. <laughs> Dude, I love that. I've got to go to that tip three times a week. Yeah, with with I bought a truck specially for it. To really? Truck, truck, even though you're not even allowed. Trucks what are you throwing anymore. out, by the way? Just household rubbish. Ah, oh, household rubbish. Just yeah, like yeah. bin bags of rubbish. Yeah. Yeah? yeah. I've only got two bins. Yeah. I pay three and a half grand a year council tax. Yeah. Three hundred and fifty quid a month. Yeah. And they come every other week. And they come every yeah. once every month. Oh, really? Twice a month they come. Yeah. Really. Twice a month. Yeah. So after three days, the two bins are full. Yeah. I said I need twenty bins. Yes. They won't give you any more bins. So I've got this truck and I go back and forth to the tip, local tip, three mile away. Dude, I'm sick it. of seeing me. Dude, you have to you know what happens to us. If someone steals the bin, we've got to buy a new one. I'm like, I pay £350 a fucking month for a bin and you can't even give me a new one? No, they're it's around insane, 36 quid, aren't they? Unbelievable. Like Unbelievable. I've got a, a big bin and a skinny one and they just they fill up in two seconds. Yeah. I've got five kids in the house and two adults and whoever yeah. comes around visiting. Yeah. So, yeah. That's a, that's a lot of junk. I'm thinking about lobbying that council tax. Yeah, days. and then they're complaining about the fucking recycling stuff. I can't do oh, the can't recycle. Can you See not? them boxings? Yes. Yeah. They fucking drive me nuts. <laughs> them little green bins. Yes. Are one for jars of shit. One yeah. for cardboard. I'll put stuff in it. My wife's like, you can't put that in there. It's got. Food. It's had food in it. It's glass. I don't. I can't do it. Go, all goes in a bin bag. Yeah. Everything. Tie it up. Yeah. On the back of the truck. With yeah. It. Within two it. or three days, it's full. He's got about 30 bags on the back now because I went to the tip this morning, yeah, and it was closed. Have you, is that what you've came in? Yeah, I've come Have in. Have you given the truck? Yeah, I yeah. fucking love that, mate. I, I went it. to tip on the way, it was closed, yeah. I just come straight here. Fuck it, I love it. Actually, in our town now, you're only allowed to go to the tip on days if your car's got an even number in the registration. So you can only, if, you, if it's a Monday, you've got to have an even registration. If it's a Tuesday, you've got to have an odd number in your registration. It's fucking nuts. That'll drive you insane, eh? <laughs> drive you nuts. It would because I'm OCD as well. OCD as well. Yeah. Yeah. So all them odd numbers and even numbers and that. See them stupid cups on there driving yeah. me nuts. Are oh, they really? Them, yeah. Are you a tidy upper? Yeah, I'm a tidy upper, yeah. 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 Was we'll like, do him in your bedroom, man. <laughs> that's a good thing. That's the only good thing about being married to me. Yeah. Is um, I'm ultra... Straight, clean, really. That sort of thing. I have to edit this out because my wife listens. She might want it to move. <laughs> <laughs> or listen, can you give it him? Is it catchable? <laughs> <laughs> Is it contagious? Yeah. Is it contagious? So Tyson, what was the hardest part of getting your shit together? The hardest part of it all was getting my mind straight. Like yeah. obviously, being twenty-eight stone didn't help me. I was on the yeah. verge of having a heart attack. Yeah. 
but I'd lost a lot of weight before. Yeah. I'd lost I lost six stone before I fought Vladimir Klitschko. Really? I lost six stone in eight weeks. Yeah. Absolutely slaughtered myself and I went beat him up. Yeah. So yeah, the losing the weight thing was never gonna be a problem for me ever. The biggest side of it all was getting my mind straight. Yeah. Because no matter like people listen to me and they think, well, how bad could it have been? Like trying to take your own life, not having no will to want to live anymore it's and breathe in fresh it? air. Yeah. You can't go any lower than that. The yeah. only the only lower you can go in that is being lowered into a grave, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah, it is. So yeah, I woke up every day and it was like, This is a shit day and it's a grey day and I don't want to live. Yeah. And I didn't want to live. And I had everything. I had money, fame, glory, mm -hmm. achievements, a family, a house, a home, loving parents, loving family, everything that a man could ever want. Yeah. GK had it. Yeah. But it never meant anything. I just wanted to die. Yeah. And the more I had and the more success I gained, mm -hmm. the more I wanted to die. Yeah. Which sounds strange. Yeah. I understand that. Yeah. But this is the world I was living in. Well, it just goes to prove depression doesn't give a fuck how successful you are. Doesn't matter. I get comments are. like this on my videos all the time. Oh, well, you were successful. You've got a wife. You've got kids. And I get this. I got one yesterday. Get a grip. And I'm like, dude, depression doesn't That's give a worst. fuck. Yeah, exactly. That's the worst thing that people can say to you is get a grip or pull yourself together or something stupid like that. Yeah. That's a very uneducated uh, answer. I mean, this is exact. I said to him, I said to the guy, this is the exact reason why men don't speak out because that's what they think they're going to get back. Well, that's exactly what they think. Yeah. But I'm here to say help is around the corner mm -hmm. because no matter how low it goes, it doesn't go any lower than I did. Like I said, the only lower you could get is dying. Yeah. Um, help is out there and it is around the corner only if you just ask and, yeah. and you will receive yeah. and do you think talking's enough or do you think there has to be more talking is one thing but actions have to be I agree one and thing. right we could talk all day and I could go out there and, and go straight back to doing some shite that I didn't want to do Yeah. so it's you've got to be taught and shown See, my problem was as well, I, was, I wasn't I was just a depressive and all that I was yeah. drinking and taking drugs as well yeah. and do you think which that made impact it 20 you... times yeah. worse yeah. yeah right so I was on a really big spiral of shit. Yes. Um, couldn't get off it. Couldn't yeah. get off it. Because it was the only thing that made you feel better. Yeah, it? see, yeah. people say, oh, he was an alcoholic, he was drug addict and all yeah. that, right? I, I don't really care for all that. I don't yeah. even really drink no more. Yeah. I can go and have a beer with the boys or whatever, but it doesn't yeah. really do anything for me. I'm not a drink. I can have as good as time having a Diet Coke yes. as he can over there having 10 vodkas and oranges. Yes. Because that's what personality yeah. I don't need a drink to start dancing and having a sing song yeah, and all yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, what was I just saying? I've gone off track. You're saying we were talking about um, boozing and how it led you. Oh yeah, 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 um, yeah. So I did it as an escape. Yeah. Because no matter how, even do you know when I was so down and when I was in that room and, and fritted to death of yeah. someone coming to kill me and yeah. whatever, of all, all these paranoid things, mm -hmm. four pints and I'm back. A bit drunk, but I'm all right. Yeah, again. I agree. I, I agree. fight the devil. No one will scare me. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So. Four I've, pints of confidence. Yeah, four pints of confidence yeah. and nerve calmers. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that was my way of not taking any medication. Yes. Okay, because, all right, medication's one thing, but, yeah. you know, a few beers, sweat yes. it out. You know that's what, what I mean? I'm, I'm going to do. This is what you think yeah, in your own mind. Do. Yeah? yeah. So I was getting absolutely smashed every night yeah. just to calm myself down. Yeah. <laughs> and when I think about it now, I think, whatever was I doing? Yeah. So every night, I'd, I got into a routine of having like six, seven beers a night. Yeah. And that's not out of the ordinary for some someone like me because a lot of people I know, they go home from work, they work hard all week, they come home, they have a couple of bottles of wine or they have a few beers to yes. relax yes. and unwind. Yes. So that's just like a normal thing, really, yeah. for a yeah. lot of people. Yeah. A lot of my mates, they work hard all day, they graft off all day, yeah. and then they come home and then they have a shower and they have a few beers. Yeah. That's to relax. They get yeah. out of the house, they go to the pub or they go in the man cave or whatever they've got. Yeah. Then that's the way of getting out. So yeah. it wasn't looked up, I wasn't looked upon like oh as a raging alcoholic. Yeah. So it was almost accepted, which made it more a doable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah, what yeah, I mean? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I was drinking these drinks every night and it was just Yeah. I've done that for about six months to and I, do you know what I thought? I found myself a cure here. Yeah. yeah. I get up in the morning, no hangover after I found the right drink. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I felt yeah. alright but yeah. then as soon as it come again night time yeah. again bang straight yeah. on it again Yeah, and it was just no good and I, I, was, I was on a never ending spiral of rubbish really and, yeah. and I believe 
if I wouldn't have stopped and, and got myself back on track, I'd have, I'd have definitely been dead by now, yeah. for one. If I wouldn't have killed myself, yeah. one, I'd definitely had a heart attack and died. Yeah. I'd have been 38 stone or something. I wouldn't have fit in three of these chairs. <laughs> and I would not be doing this interview. Yeah. That's for sure. But, yeah, going back on to men with mental health, because yeah. I know we've, we've stayed right around it and yeah. gone back again, yeah. is from my personal experience, so I'm definitely qualified to say this, yes. is the sooner you speak to somebody, mm -hmm. doctor or family, friends, or anybody you need to speak mm -hmm. to, get off your chest, mm -hmm. speak about it, and then get the right help. Because yeah. like you said, speaking about it is not enough. It's not. It's not. And you know, I think that one thing is that we almost, guys in that situation, when you're rock bottom, you already feel like a fucking burden. Mm -hmm. I know that was the case for me. I already felt like I was a nightmare for my wife. I already felt like my kids would be better off without me. You may have had that thought as well. Yeah, yeah that's the exact feelings that you get. Yeah, yeah my kids would be, there's no logic, is there? No. Nah, so I was no like, logic. my kids would be better off without me. I'm a burden anyway. So I think that's why we find it such a, uh, such a trouble to speak out. And I think who you talk to is a challenge as well because you've got some people that won't know how to deal with it. You know, like, I need to be told the truth because I'd want to see shrinks, psychologists, all of those people could look them in the eye and I could tell that he hasn't got a fucking clue what I'm going through. Unless you've been through it, yeah. unless you know about it, yeah. the normal person on the street has no idea what you're talking about. No. They just listen to you no. and they think, yeah, get yeah. your shit together. Pull your head Pull together. yourself together. That's yeah, exactly Man up, man up. That's my favourite so, one. Fucking man up. Unless someone's been through it and experienced depression and mental health problems. Yeah. And, they, they and you got that talk. with Ben, right? Yeah. Yeah. When you first started working with him. Yeah, because Ben, ben was a depressive person as well for yeah. a long time. Yeah. But, um, yeah, like I say, as soon as you can speak to somebody, professional, yeah. Yeah. or whoever it is that you're going to give confidence to, mm -hmm. the sooner you can return to what would be normal to you. Yeah. Because I didn't do it until 2016, but I wish to God I'd have done it 10 years before. Yeah. That's my only regret when I get asked what my regrets Why didn't are. I go and see a doctor years ago? Why did I not do that? Mm. But it's it's just like saying... How long's piece of string? Well, you did it at the what perfect if, time because that's the time bits. that you did it. But if I would have done it ten years before all this, and yeah. maybe two thousand and eight or something, like, yeah, then I would have never had to go through all these problems in my professional career, mm -hmm. which would have never led to everything I've probably been through yeah. and come back the other side. It wouldn't have been as good a story, but I wouldn't have had to put up with all that stuff that I've been through and torture everybody around me. Yes, so it would have yeah. been better. Yeah, but a story wouldn't have been as good because it wouldn't have been as much pain in it. <laughs> You're right. You're right. And we wouldn't have been doing this interview, mate. So, exactly. Well, your timing was perfect. Well, dude, what um, do you think that you could ever end up back there? Very, very easy. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. I remind myself every day yeah. how far I've come yeah. and never to look back. Yeah. You know, I said to Paris the other day, yeah, I said, rather than going back to where I was mentally, never mind physically, yeah. mentally, I'd rather be living in a tent under the bushes outside and in debt yeah. than go back to being there and having a billion dollars in the bank. Yeah. Because I do not want to be there. You know, I can sit here today as a man who's done very well in his life and achieved a lot, mm -hmm. done pretty well. But none of that means anything to me. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, achievements and money and all that fame stuff, right? That's all right when everything's going well. When everything's lovely and nice and everyone's healthy and well, then all that's trimmings is good to have. Yes. But you know when there's a problem in your family or with you, yeah. then nothing really matters. Yeah. There's a saying, and I never really understood it, your health is your wealth. Yes. Um, and without health, you've not got happiness. And without happiness, you'll never, ever, ever think fulfillment or anything. Anything. You'll always be unhappy. So tell me this. What makes you feel happy? There's only one thing that makes me feel happy, and that's training. Dude, that's amazing. And I will train until the day I die. Really? You know all the boxing and all that stuff? If I ended tomorrow, I wouldn't be interested. And you'd be okay with still training? I, I have to train forever. What's your favourite kind of training? I like I like all types of training, but I like running. I like long runs, and yeah. I like challenging stuff. Like so, I like stuff that would separate the men from the boys. Yeah, I like yeah, yeah. like steep hill runs, like yeah. ten mile up a mountain, that sort yeah. of stuff. Yeah, you know, and when I feel like quitting, I feel like, come on, you shit house, keep going. <laughs> what have you got inside? You gonna have an heart attack? Well, fucking do it then. 
go on, like push myself to the extreme challenges. You know oh, what I mean? Yeah, I do. I don't mean like swimming thirty mile underwater and stuff like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I mean, like for me, it would be running on on like hard, challenging roads. And yeah. there's this place on Windermere that I've nicknamed Death Valley, and not many people can finish so it. I was at Windermere at the weekend with the kids. Yeah. We did that go wave thing, you know, that heights oh, challenge. Oh yeah, yeah, the, uh, yeah, the go wave, the zip wires. And yeah, all dude, that. it was a bunch of fun. It's yeah. Good, isn't it? Do you know what's crazy? My kids were just fucking walking around with no hands, and I'm like, "This will look up." My kids, kids don't have kids any fear, didn't, fear, didn't, fuck, didn't give a fuck. So tell me about this then. I, I think for you, routine's fucking critical, right? Routine is critical, and you know, every Sunday I realise how critical routine is, because I train six days a week. Yeah, I train three times a day, Monday to Friday. Yeah, I do a mammoth run on a Saturday. Yeah. Like we're run that put you in bed for a week type of thing. Really? Yeah. And and then on Sunday I don't train because yeah. your body needs to recover yeah. from all that thing. But yeah. I find myself even on Sunday sometimes doing a ten mile or something like that just to keep my mind just occupied. To keep your head in the game. Because Sunday is a terrible day for me. Sunday reminds me of every day that I was very unwell back in the day. Is it? Yeah, only a short period of time. Two years ago, remember, I yeah. was I was out I mean up completely. Um so Sunday reminds me of those days yeah. um, and how I never want to go back there again. And like yeah. I say, I'd rather have a job sweeping the roads up and be mentally well. Or working at the tip. Yeah, well, I'd like a job yeah. of working at the tip anyway. <laughs> Maybe after boxing, who knows? Yeah. I think, yeah. I think going to that tip is yeah. a very therapeutic thing, right? Yeah. What I do is go around the garden once or twice a week, picking all the shit up, broken toys. Because my kids will get toys and they start hammering them up and all that. Yeah. Breaking them, pulling yeah. wheels off. <laughs> really? Cars and stuff. And Just seeing how they work? Yeah, basically. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I'll go around, tidy up, chuck all on the back of the truck, yeah. take it to the tip, bag it all up. And they say, oh, do you want to have them getting off? No, no, fine. Yeah. Get it all off. Like, get yeah. me out of the house for an hour, that sort of thing, you know. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Absolutely love it. The drive probably does you some good. And... The drive, being alone, thinking time and all that, and keep your mind occupied. I'm yeah. one of them like busy bees. I've got to always be doing something. Yeah. I'm not a person that could go and relax in Spain on the beach with a pina colada or laying yeah. in the sun with some oil on. Yeah. I couldn't do it. Yeah. But then on the other hand, I've no interest in all that historical stuff like going walking around buildings and, no, no, and fountains yeah, yeah. and whatever, none of that sort of stuff. I think sometimes, you know, guys like us who have these... I think anyone that has anxiety has quite a creative intellect because a lot of the time we're in, we're making problems up, right? So I think a lot of our problems come when we're fucking bored. That's because right. Because we're not solving problems, training problems, boxing problems, a- any kind of problems. True. We start to create prob our mind will create problems for us that don't exist. Well, there's a saying, isn't it? The devil makes work for idle hands. Yeah. And that's very, very true. Yeah. You know, when I've got nothing to do on some days is the day when I've got nothing to do. You yeah. Know? I'm thinking, like you say, you create problems that don't yeah. exist. Yeah. And you think, what if? But if you spend all your time thinking about that stuff UFC that never game, happens. Dude. That's when you're on that UFC game. You know what, though, yeah? I um, I think the computers and things, the PlayStation and all, that's very, that's therapeutic as well. Oh, because very therapeutic. When we was in camp, yeah, we was having FIFA tournaments, yeah. right? Who's your team? Obviously, United. Man United? Yeah. Is it? Yeah. And um, so we've been having these FIFA tournaments. Like, yeah. We've been having them for like three months. Yeah. And everybody in the house, you'd have to like three games wins to go through to the next round. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Big knockout tournaments. And it, it was really, really good spending your time. Yeah. Because it f- keeps your mind focused. Because you're not something. thinking about anything else. You're yeah. thinking about that. Your attention's you? on the game. So yeah, I'm always got to be thinking about something, doing something. Yeah. And I like to keep active and, and running and walks and river walks and yeah. all that sort of stuff. And yeah. So, yeah. You know, I think that happens to a lot of guys, you know, I think guys that, a lot of guys that are struggling, they kind of lose a sense of purpose and I think that's what might have happened to you, right? You didn't have a, once you'd won that title, no purpose. There was no, there was no yeah. purpose, no sense of purpose. So I think a lot of guys, we, uh, this was particularly the case for me, I hit this goal of my life where I had this business, I left school with two GCSEs and then I was like, is this it? I'd lost my purpose and I think it happens for a lot of guys where they kind of, their only purpose is kind of to make it to the weekend. And I think they almost lose a sense of ambition once you get to a certain age. But the thing is, yeah, there's a lot to be said for a normal life. Oh, dude, 100%. My you know, life was easier when it was just going to work and coming home. You know, yeah. I, pe- pe- some people look at me and say, oh, you're a lucky man. And I say, nothing's luck. I said, I've worked hard all my life, right? But the thing is, you don't realise, but you're the lucky one, not me. 
I can't walk down the street without being tortured. Yeah. People videoing me or I could be saying anything to anybody yeah. and there'd be someone videoing what I'm saying somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Or grabbing me for a picture or whatever. Even if I'm in a very bad mood and me yeah. and the wife's arguing, I've got people coming over for, for pictures and whatever and you can't be nasty to them because it's not their fault. Yeah. It's not their fault. You're they don't know what's day. going on. But I'm only human. I'm yeah. not going to be happy every day, all day. Yeah. You know, it's 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 one of them. So to go somewhere and not be mithered, yeah, that's worth millions. Like normal people can go to the shop, do the shopping, not be mithered. Yeah. They can go for a meal. Yeah. Have a sit down, there him and his wife or the kids or whatever. Yeah. No one coming over, no yeah. one mithering. And is that quite a hard thing to deal with or is it it's well, part of the they, I feel like figuring out how to do deal with it. Yeah. Don't go to any public places. <laughs> don't go where there's other people. And um, yeah, basically don't go anywhere. That's why I don't really leave Morecambe. Yeah. Because people in Morecambe have, have seen me now. Yeah. And on the weekends, I don't go down the front or wherever because tourists come there. Yeah. So I'll be yeah, tortured yeah. again. Yeah. And if I'm running, I run in like desolate places. Yeah. But if I run down the front, I don't get me run done. People are running in front of me with bikes and stuff and following me and all yeah, that. So yeah, that's all it's I'm my doing. it's my problem because I've been successful and I've got a lot of fans, which I appreciate. Yeah. But it's a time and a place for it all, isn't there? Mm. And, you know, some days I'm happy to do a bazillion pictures, whatever. Yeah. But some days I'm in one of those down moods and I just want to listen to me music and yeah. run. Yeah, yeah. And, and that, that's what it is. But it, uh, a normal life is something to be, be very thankful for. And do you because... still wake up sometimes in the mood of a shitty space? Yeah, yeah, all the time. And what's the first thing you do? First yeah. thing I do is look in the mirror and say, you don't want to go back to where you was. Let's get out for a run. But I know as soon as I've trained... Happy modes of thinking, all that endorphins released in your brain, and you feel good. Yeah. So that's why I train, and I can't get enough training, really. Yeah. I love, I absolutely love training, not for boxing. Yeah. Just for training. Yeah. And feeling great. I'd go out, instead of like me and the boys going out and out to the pub, or we used to do, we'd go out for a, and like a monster run or something. Yeah. And, and is there any times where you're like, I can't afterwards. be fucking arsed to train, or do you know? No, no, no. You never get that? No, I don't. It's not that. Did I don't you before? See it as a chore, yeah. yeah. I never used to train before, only for boxing. Yes. So if I had a fight coming up, I'd do training for it, do yes. the fight, and that's it, go back to normal. Because you felt obliged to, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I'd never train in between fights. I'd blow, blown up every time, yeah. 25 stone or something. Yeah. I wouldn't even do any training outside of training camp at all. Yeah. But now, it's like a go into camp the same way as I come out of camp because I'm, I'm always on it. Yeah. But I train for me, not for anything else now. Yeah. No, so. Amazing. But and I, I think that I think that for some guys, because whenever you go to a doctor, one of the first things they'll see is exercise. But I think when guys are that low, that feels like they've got to fucking move a mountain because when, when I was that low, I didn't want to leave the fucking house. So I think that, that the thing that you're seeing about that is I think that someone's, because a lot of people think, oh, well, I have to go to the gym and I don't want to go to the foot. You You've got to find to something to that you gym. like to do, you don't, don't you? You don't have to even do any intense exercise. Yeah. Any form of physical exercise will make you feel better. Yeah. That's a fact. Yeah, we have whether guys going in cold showers. Whether it's walking up and down the stairs five times, whether you're going for a little walk around near your house, wherever. You yeah. don't have to go for a 25-mile run. Yeah. <laughs> lift a load of weights and go to the gym. Yeah. Because when you're down in that place, you don't want to go around nah. other people. Nah. You want to be left alone. Yeah, yeah. So you go for a little walk, come back, you feel better. Yeah. My happy place is the road. Yeah. And people say, oh, you shouldn't run, you're too heavy and too big, you'll have knackered legs and back by the time yeah. you're 50. Yeah. But like, my solace is the road. Mm. It's my place to think. Mm. I don't even run with uh, music on anymore. Really? Because the music is keeping my mind occupied and I can't think about anything else apart from listening to the music. Yes. So now, for a long time, I, I've, I've run... And I think about my life. I yeah. think about where I am. I think about what's going on. Yeah. I think about the good things. I think You're solving about the bad problems. Things. I'm always solving problems yeah. in my mind. Yeah. So yeah, I love it, dude. I'm gonna bring up some of these questions because there's yeah. some that I don't want to miss. Um, are there ever times when you feel like jacking it in? Jacking the boxing. The boxing. Yeah. Um, not really, because I'm in a happy place now. Yeah. With it. Yeah. Before, I wasn't in a happy place. Yeah. Um, I never had the the right team. I never had the right people around me. Yeah. But now I have. I've got everything that I should have had from the beginning. Yes. All around me in the right yeah. places and the right. Do you know what it feels like to me for your life, Tyson, which I fucking love. 
which is boxing feels like a bonus for you. Yeah. Like it feels like a it feels like the cherry on top of the cake for you now. It is. Um, for boxing for me now, it's always been fun and games boxing for me. It's yeah. never, I've never been serious about boxing. Yeah. And that's probably why I'm so good at it. <laughs> because if it was my absolute life, and yes. trained like a Trojan every yes. day in a gym and I couldn't think about nothing but boxing, yes. I'd probably be dog shit. Yeah. But because it's... Because you'd overthink it probably. Yeah. yeah. But because it's like, oh well, something I'm good at, always been able to box, yeah. great. Yeah. Come on, try and beat me, that sort of thing. Yeah. Because it's just a little joke to me. Yeah. That's why I'm, why I'm good at the game. Dude, I love that. But yeah, the boxing is you know added bonus really because, yeah. like, I do all the training anyway, and like yeah. I've done boxing and fighting all my life, yeah. so it's like a walk in the park really. They don't yeah. know what they're getting themselves in for these fighters. <laughs> really, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like I've been fighting since I come out of the womb. Yeah. So it's almost unfair. It's almost like I'm cheating really. Yeah. Because it's like I've got all the cheat codes for the yeah, Kentucky game. You don't feel it? like you've ever had to learn it. Never had to learn boxing. Yeah. It's always been natural. Yeah. It'd be boxing to me has been like taking a frog out of a pond for ten years and chucking it back in. Yeah. It knows yeah. what it's doing straight away. Yeah. I love so, it. So and these guys come to boxing, they have to learn it. Yeah. I walked in the gym like I've had twenty thirty fights. Never boxed in my life. Yeah. How old were you when it went in the gym? You were, you were like fourteen or something. Fourteen, right? fourteen years old, yeah, but yeah. I I trained all my life from being a little kid yeah. with my dad, punching yeah. hands, that sort of thing. Yeah. Um so yeah. People who have to learn it, it's unfair for them because yeah. I'm a natural yeah. at it. Yeah. So, yeah, I just see it as a, as a joke, really. Yeah, I love it. And what do you up. think it is about, because we, obviously, again, we work with a lot of guys, and I think boxing has changed a lot of... We have guys, like, 50 years old One taking charity boxing matches. Yeah. And I'm, what do you think it is about boxing that just almost <laughs> saves people's lives? Boxing saved my life, that's for sure. Yeah. And I know it saves a lot of other people's yeah. lives, too, because... If it wasn't for boxing, I don't know where I'd be right now. Yeah. I don't know what road I would have been down. Yeah. Um, a lot of people could go down wrong roads, get involved in gangs and cults and groups and stuff and go to jail. Yeah. But the through boxing, they've been saved and yeah. now they've got jobs and they've got life yeah. and they've got families and yeah. kids and that. So I'm, I'm a product of, of that yeah. boxing family. Why do you think it is? And I just think boxing teaches discipline, as especially to kids. Yes. Like we in Wivenshaw, where I used to box, yeah. um, we used to have these kids coming, like the naughtiest kids in the area. Yes, uh, they're like expelled from school. They'd be brought in on these like day trips. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And some of them would come in as really naughty kids, like chopping kids up and stuff. Yeah, yeah. to going out like getting back to school and getting proper deg degrees and yeah. education and everything, yeah. doing really well. And I see see a couple of these guys now yeah. and they've all done well for themselves. Yeah. And these were like kids who were expelled and too naughty for school. Yeah, yeah. Teaches discipline, teaches manners. Yeah. It teaches you how to be a man, how to be a woman. And it teaches you respect for others. Yeah. Because people who are cheeky and rude to other people have probably never been punched in the mouth before. <laughs> That's a fact. Because <laughs> if you had been punched in the face before... Yes. You'd realise that. It's like an attitude adjustment. An attitude adjustment. Yeah. I used to see it, especially on that estate where I was training. Yeah. Like you get these kids walking with the limps and yeah. bad boys and all that, yeah. all dressed in black, black balaclavas on, <laughs> a lot, yeah? Yeah. yeah. They come in the gym and then some little gimpy kid in the corner, yeah. blonde hair and glass, taste glasses on. Milky bar kid. Get in the ring, bam, yeah. bam, 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 splatter them. They're like, <laughs> Yeah. And I knew it would happen because this guy's a boxer. Yeah. And these are just like young kids off the street, never yeah, boxed yeah. ever. Yeah. And then you can see the change, the attitude adjustment. Yeah. Just because they've looked at this kid as a as a little gimpy kid. A little nerd, yeah. A little wimpy diary kid off the TV. Yeah. And he's absolutely battered this hard case. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it teaches them like, I need to either learn this. Yeah. Or Shut me mouth. Adjust, yeah. basically. Yeah. And I think that the thing for the older guys, what I found was camaraderie in the gym's amazing. Yeah. It does teach you discipline. And Banter I think as well in the gym's amazing. Banter's amazing, older. amazing. And there's no training like the boxing training. Nah. you got banter, you got the fun and games in the gym. Yeah. you got all the men in there and women in there who's on the same wavelength. Yeah. They're all there to, if they're not boxers or whatever, they're all yeah. there to work out and, yeah. and and get that feeling, that happy Well, because there's nothing, there's nothing for some people. I mean, I know when I was having my problems with booze and coke is that when I discovered boxing, and particularly the first time I fucking sparred at 36, by the way, yeah, I'd never felt a buzz like that. 
There's no buzz. Never like felt a buzz like that. It no makes drug you feel alive. Or alcohol can ever, nah. ever come close to boxing. Nah. And that's why you see all these great fighters retire for 10 years and come back at 40 odd years old when they're finished. Yeah. Because no matter how much money they've made, nothing can quench the thirst of going in the ring and fighting with other people. Yeah. yeah. It's almost like it's animalistic. Yeah. It's um, what we would have done a thousand years ago. Yeah. And men have been settling disputes by punching each other in the face. Especially since with your time background, began. right? Yeah. yeah. Since time began, men have been battling out, haven't they, in the yeah. glad gladiatorial rings, yeah. and before all that even. Yeah. Speaking of this, is your dad going to make a comeback? My dad, he's 55, he's yeah. fit as a fiddle. At the moment. Is he really fit? Very fit. Does he train with you? He trains with me, he's running every day, he's... I don't know about making a boxing comeback, but he's definitely... Uh, yeah, because you hear already. all these rumours, don't you? I remember that guy on the social media called your dad out and shit. Yeah, there's, there's loads. There's always going to be somebody trying to make a name for themselves. Yes. But the fact of the matter is, until you've proved yourself and earned your stripes, you shouldn't be shouting. <laughs> but, you know, everyone yeah. to their own opinion and own things, yeah. and it is what it yeah. is. It's and what's your feelings on social media? Feelings on social media is is very mixed, because... I believe that social media has a massive impact on mental health problems me in young kids. Yes, me too. Especially the younger ones. Yeah. Because there's a lot of online bullying going on mm -hmm. and stuff like that on social media. And mm -hmm. if you're down, you go and look at some comments, yeah. you will even get more down and more yeah. depressed, yeah. right? So I've learned a technique how to deal with it. Switch the comments off. Then you can't get no negative comments. <laughs> <laughs> it will drive everybody nuts. Dude, I love this. We're, so, we're trying to do a book deal at the minute, and I'm like, do I have to put the reviews on Amazon? What if somebody doesn't fucking like it? Yeah, 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 the yeah. One star yeah. reviews and shit. I'm like, oh my god, you so can't do those. I've turned all my comments off on social media. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll just post whatever I want to post. Yeah. I use social media as the platform to update my friends and, yes. and fans yes. on what I'm doing. My progress. But it's also you got to think it's for 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 us and on on this. It's an amazing platform to kind of impact people positively as well. Of course. Yeah. That's what I use it for. Yeah. In positive impact yeah. and updates and stuff. Yeah. I'm not interested in what someone is saying who yeah. don't know me, yeah. who don't live near me, and yeah. I've never ever seen before, or, <laughs> or you're a mug, you're, you're a shitboxer. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> but I don't want to see all that anyway. So yeah. the only people that can comment on my posts are people that I follow, which yeah. ain't very many, yeah. because it's not a personal account. It's just a business account. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. All right. What's next? What we got next? Um, what are you going to do after boxing? After Apart from UFC? After boxing? <laughs> well, that might not be after boxing. I might, might, might oh, be during dude. boxing. I love it. Um, I'd love to have a fight with them little gloves on. Yeah. With one of their heavyweights, whoever it may be. Yeah. But with different rules, not like grabbing or all that rules. Yeah. But just stand up, punch and kick, maybe. Yeah. How's your kick? In, uh, my kicking's not great, but I'm a quick learner. I can learn anything quick. Yeah. But yeah, like grappling to the floor, that's another game. Yeah. Totally. Like Brazilian Jiu Jitsu yeah. and wrestling, that's next level. Have you that's done like any? Street fight, isn't it? Have you done any yet? Uh, wrestling and all that. Jiu Jitsu. No, I've never done it. I think I'm too old to learn it, to be fair. I started when I was 37. But, like, to become a black belt takes... Oh, oh I do, yeah. A long time. Long? Like, 20 years sometimes. 20 years, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. I haven't got 20 years left, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah. But I'd love to have a crossover fight with one of them. In a cage, stand up, punch yeah. and kick. Yeah. Fall at it like that. Dude, that would be cool. Have yeah. little gloves on as well. That would be really cool, yeah. But, the actual, like, grab me to the floor and that. It's um, one one I don't find it exciting or interesting at all to watch. Just putting it out there. Yes, it's a very skilled thing. Yes, but in, even in UFC, even UFC fans, they're only like they it when they stand up. Yeah. yeah, yeah. When they're standing up, punching, kicking, elbow, and knee each war. other. Yeah, great. Yeah. Best best thing to watch ever. Yeah, but when they start rolling up and down the floor. Yeah, and I can't tell who's winning or out of scoring points. Yeah. And even the people booing in the crowd yeah. and the referees saying, go and get up, lads, yeah, get up, fight. you're not doing anything. Scrap. Yeah. Yeah. Then I can't fight. I don't find that interesting. I don't know how they win or lose. Yeah. But actual, when it's stood up and they're going at it, yeah. I think it's the best best entertainment Yeah, it is. You, can so get. you see some, uh, especially now, dude, that, that there's no fans in and you can hear every punch. It's. Um, do you think that's going to happen here? Because in, in there's a fight soon where there's no there's no fans, right? And a Dillian yeah. White's fight. Frank Warren had a show last week. Um, 
the first show. I saw it. I saw on it. BT it, Sport. Yeah. Was it a young lad? Young lad had a British title fight or something. Yeah, uh, Brad Foster. Yeah. And you heard those. You heard every shot. You heard every shot, and then he's got another one on this week. He's yeah. got four or five, six shows lined up every yeah. weekend. Oh, has he? Yeah, and Eddie Earn's got the same. I think he's yeah. signed next month, maybe yeah. or at middle of the month. Yeah. Would you? Would show. you like to fight like that? You know? Or would you not be bothered? Be honest with you. You love the fan. You love yeah, the I, I do that, love right? I, see see with me it's all show show, isn't it? It's a show yeah. business game yeah. for me. Like the boxing is probably the last thing that I actually care about. Yeah. Because that's what I know I can deliver on. Yeah. But the rest of it, the the entertainment side, the value for money, that side of thing. Yes. That's what I like to do. I like to put on the shows and entertain the crowd and give them something to cheer for and Dress up and act a clown and do all the, the good things. Yeah. The boxing side of it. If you strip boxing down, you take all the glitz and glamour away in the show business side of it. Then basically, you've got two guys punching each other in the face. Just a dust up, yeah. Just a dust up, which you could go and watch a dust up in your local working man's club, can't you? <laughs> on a Friday night. Well, I know we can hear in more clubs. Yeah, we can in South Shields yeah. as well, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, there's plenty of uh, Jubilee clubs around here that you <laughs> want to see a bit of value for entertainment. Friday, Saturday night, they're going off all the yeah. time. Yeah. But. What makes a difference in world class sports is is the production that goes into everything. Mm. Mm. But yeah, I absolutely love the boxing game. I love the the fact of the dressing up, the character, the going into character, and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, I love it. yeah remember that time you dressed up as Batman? Yeah, <laughs> I've done it all now. Haven't I? I've been Batman. I've been Apollo Creed. I've been a Mexican. I've been a king. I've... Yeah, I love it. So, um, what what's your least favorite thing about boxing? My least favourite thing about boxing. You know what? I would answer that question and my brain's telling me to say time away from my family, yeah. away from my kids. But yeah. when I think about it, I actually like that. Yeah. Because it gives me that time to to be alone. Yeah. Well, not alone because I've got like 20 people Team. in camp yeah. with me. Yeah. But it gives me that time to be away from the family. Yeah. And when you go away from something that you've had every day, you almost appreciate it yeah, more when, when you yeah. go back. I agree. And I need to, I'm that type of person who needs to be reminded with through actions mm. how much I appreciate what I am and what I've got yeah. and, and me family and that. Yeah. So when I go away, can't wait to go back, plan out a million things I'm going to do when I get back. Don't do any of it, obviously, when I get back. Do you think <laughs> that right in that plan helps you? Yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah, I'm the same. Lists, 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 yeah, lists, lists. Lists, lists, And yeah. how many of that list do you get for it? Oh, not many. <laughs> not many. Not many. It just clears my mind. Me and I, me pal Isaac, yeah, he's my training partner. He's featherweight Yeah, champion. I've seen him. He's a lovely little boxer. Uh, we we plan what we're going to do after the fight. Yeah. And where we're going to go. He, he's been wanting to go, listen, literally for five years on a camping trip after one of the fights, right? <laughs> That's what he wants to do, right? He wants to get all the lads together in a right. tent each, yeah? yeah? Go to, like, a camping site in the middle of nowhere, get a load of drink, right. and have a big piss-up for the weekend and sleep in tents. Yeah. But obviously, <laughs> I'm trying to avoid all that, but it's easy, on, always on his list to do, like, to do, Is to it? do, to do. Yeah, five years we've been wanting to do that. Shit. So we'll have to do it one of the days. After this next fight? After the next fight, maybe, yeah. Yeah. But from, I've started now, uh, I've become teetotal. Completely teetotal. Completely teetotal. I've wanted to do it for maybe 10 years. Yeah. Um, and I think I'm really mature enough now to be able to pull it off. Mm. Um, like I said, I don't really need alcohol. To have a good time. To have a good time. Yeah. Because I can get in that zone and you think I've had a load of drugs and I'm drunk, but I'm not, I've never had anything. Yeah, because I'm in that zone. I'm, I'm on it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah I do. Especially in a bit of a rave or something. Yeah. Going nuts in there with a bottle of water. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. So, and is there yeah. any? Peer, do you get any peer? Because we get a lot of guys that want to do that, but obviously you're like, I'm training for a fight. I'm this. I'm that. Like a lot of our guys are getting peer pressure. Like, what's the matter with you? Why are you not drinking? Yeah, come Relax. on, have a drink. What's yeah, up with you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's up? You just one's fine. Yeah. What but, would your advice be to those guys? To those guys is stick to what you're gonna do. And never mind your pals and all. If they're true friends, they'll understand. They're not going to push you to do something you don't want to do. Yes. And if you want to become teetotal and stop drinking, then I'd say go for it. Give it, yeah. give it a whirl. Yeah. Because you know how many years have we drunk for? Now I've been drinking twenty years. Yeah. Well, probably yeah, since yeah. I've been about ten. <laughs> 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 on the moonshine, <laughs> moonshine. <laughs> but um, 
Yeah, so I've been drinking all them years. Yeah. Um, surely I can do, Yeah. start not drinking. I've got a pal who was an alcoholic, yeah? Yeah. And he'd become teetotal because, obviously, he had a problem with drink. Yeah. And he's now been drink-free for 20 years. Jeez. But he's the type of person, mate, if he, he, wouldn't, he wouldn't even have a bottle. He couldn't social drink, you know what I mean? Yes. He couldn't go out with us now and have a, have a bottle of Peroni or something. Yeah. All or nothing because he knows that if he has that one ball, he get back on it and yes. it's not worth it. Yeah. But me, I'm not really like that. See, I'm a binge drinker, yes. Me too. So if, if I go out, mm -hmm. I'm drinking till the cows come you're home, out, yeah. out. Yeah, you go out, 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 yeah. I'm not coming home after two, yeah. no way, yeah. But it's not a regular thing for me, yes. It's like once a month thing, yeah. Do you know what I mean, yeah. Or if I have a few beers around the barbecue, but it never seems to be a few, yeah. I'll get like a box full and drink a lot, yes. Me and the boys, whatever, yeah. But it's not a, a, a regular, it's not like a routine schedule, yes. There's no routine to it, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like, oh, on plan night, let's go for a few beers, all right, let's go, yeah. But I will have plenty, yeah. I'll be staggering and falling over that type of yeah, thing, yeah, yeah, yeah. So unplanned once a month maybe yeah but that to me is what the way i've looked at it now is i'm supposed to be a man of influence yes. right i'm supposed to be leading by example mm -hmm. right and does I've that got, feel like pressure sometimes it is pressure but um it's pressure that i'm willing to take on because yeah, it's like a blessed pressure yeah, as well I suppose, i've got right? a lot of kids and things who look up to me yes. and they look at me like i'm an action figure superhero yeah right um and people as well, people with mental health, they're looking to me for influence, you know what I mean, and guidance. Yeah. And so, not often, this is not an often thing, but yeah. now and again, you'll see me absolutely smashed out my head. Yeah. Well, I've maybe had 10 or 12 pints of Peroni, and I'm blinded after one, by the way. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah really? Going. If I have two <laughs> pints of Peroni, I'm gone. What will yeah. I want to do? Really? Gone. Really? Two <laughs> bottles and I'm singing, yeah. Four <laughs> bottles and I'm anybody's. <laughs> Where are we going, Amsterdam? Let's go. Really? Honestly, it's like Shit. that. Yeah. I'm the absolute weakest drinker ever. Yeah. But I will continue to drink. Yeah. And obviously with my size I can put them away. Yeah. Yeah. Um so I, I you can imagine me after ten pints of prone if I'm drunk after one, can't you? <laughs> Gone. And I don't like the fact I couldn't that, imagine trying to carry you home, dude. Yeah. That's like a two man job, isn't it? Yeah. I'm not a violent drunk or anything like that. Yeah. I'm just like a, a happy drunk. A happy drunk, but yeah. loud, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah People yeah. say, Can you calm down, quiet down a little bit? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm singing songs and all sorts, yeah, yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. Coming over, oh, we can't sing songs in here tonight, Tyson. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Then two minutes later, I'm singing again. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I don't want to be that person people's looking at. Even though you don't do it all the time, it's yes. odd occasion, but yeah. that odd occasion sometimes is one too many. Yeah. Because I've got people who, who... And if you're in a bar, people seeing shit. Peep, and especially now with that. social media and video and yes. all that shit. Yeah. I, I envy the people from the 90s. Yeah. Like, you look at all the bits of footballers and all that, yeah. Yeah, and everybody else, oh, and everybody else. Wanted. They just do what they want. Yeah. If no one said anything, like, yeah. they would never get about, would yes. it? They lived the best life. Yeah. They lived in a time of kings. <laughs> yeah, they, they did, because they could do anything they wanted. They'd go yeah. out, get smashed. Yeah. Act up. And turn off a training the next day as and well. turn off a training. And nobody would know unless his mates crossed him up with chain going to happen. Yeah, yeah. But now, Rooney's out. Oh, his he's, videos. he's getting a lot of stuff. Ev everybody, yeah. everybody. If you go out now, it's all over social media. Well, guys are getting shit for going to see their mum during coronavirus and that. But Do in the 90s, mean? that would have never happened, nah. would it? Because there was no, none of that stuff, was nah, there? Nah, And I think the booze thing, what, I, what I'm telling guys is that, and, and you can... I'd love you to throw something in on this. Is I think when you've got that sense of purpose or you, you're working towards something in your life, you kind of you don't have time to be hungover and drunk. Like, of course you're going to drink if you've got nothing else to focus on. Exactly. And my, I mean? my thing is, is my, my biggest asset that I, I think I've learned over the years of the problems with the mental health is, yeah. is giving myself short-term goals. Now, this really, really works. Yeah. Now, a short-term goal doesn't have to be something great or something yeah. unachievable. Yes. A short-term goal can be, it can be anything that relates to the individual. It can be putting a walk in every day. It can yes. be taking the dog for a walk every yeah. day. It can be making a certain weight, like losing a few pounds. Yeah. Yeah. And then I found after, if you achieve these short-term goals, yeah. reward yourself with, whether it's a drink or a, a chocolate or whatever yeah. you tickles your fancy yeah. 
that type of thing. And yeah. I believe that without them short-term goals, I would never have returned because when you're 28 stone, you need to be 18. That's a long old road. That's a long-term goal, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. And I would have never ever got that weight down and got back yeah. if I was thinking long-term yeah. because I've got eight, I've got 10 stone to lose. Oh my God, I'm not going to yeah. do it. Do you know Do you know what I love about that, mate? I think we, we, we have this concept inside of one of our programmes where it's like, we're constantly comparing where we're at compared to where we could be instead of comparing them where we're at to where we started. And also, where you're at today, be happy with as well. Yes. Because there's always someone a lot worse off. Than, than No matter how low you can go, yeah. as long as you realise there's somebody in a lot worse estate than you, yeah. then you're on to a winner, aren't you? Because yeah. you're already feeling positive then. Yeah. You know, I've been lucky enough to have friends and, and stuff around me, good friends, that... that um, I've got a friend who has been disabled from the waist down for 25 years. Yeah. Um, he's even had one of his legs amputated uh, recently, the yeah. last couple of years. Yeah. And he's the most positive person that I've ever met. Really? Um, he does everything. He does like all these challenges, mountain climbs, everything you can feel yeah. in his wheelchair. He'd done a marathon the other day in his wheelchair, back and forth. Really? Then he'd done, like, the height of Kilimanjaro down his road. Just load, loads of inspirational stuff. Yeah. Talks. He's an ambassador for, like, disabled um, mental health patients and stuff. Yeah. He's unbelievable. I want to know when I can get him on the podcast. Well, I'd Sounds love to, amazing. Yeah. That'd be an amazing interview. He, he's definitely... He's called Sean Gash. Right. I'll uh, give you his details in a minute. Sweet. And he influenced me a lot yeah. because when I was starting back training, obviously I wasn't well, I was yeah. very unwell still, yeah. but I was, I was back trying to do a bit, you know, yeah. little bits and pieces. Yeah. What did you start with? I, st I thought I was going to start with a mile run. A mile <laughs> I run, I read right? this. I read this in your book. Yeah. And I stopped like 500 <laughs> yards and I couldn't do it. Back was killing yeah. me, belly was hanging over and I walked. Yeah. And I, I was just walking, 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 little bits and pieces, and I started yeah. running, running, running bits and more. Yeah. Just very, very steady I started. Yeah. But I used to go to the gym. It was a gym opposite. The house is closed down now. Mm -hmm. um, I saw this guy in there, Sean. I didn't know him. Yeah. And I got to know him. He was very kind, and, and he was very approachable, you know. Yeah. Um, and I thought to myself, you know what? You do all these trainings. It's mad training being in the gym for three hours, lifting weights and stuff. Like, really? Training like a lunatic. Yeah. I thought to myself, I'd always be very positive. Come yeah. on. Yeah. I thought to myself, if you, Sean, can do this every day, yeah. and you're paralysed from the waist down, all I've got to do is lose 10 stone yeah. and, and all get better. Do is, dude, that's a great attitude. All I've got to use is lose But this 10 guy's stone. got one leg on. Yeah. He can't use anything below his waist. Yeah. But he's more positive than Olympic gold medal winner. He's on it. He's, he's like he's won the Euro millions every day. Shit. Proper positive person to be around. Yeah. And he even today sends me inspirational messages at least four times a week. Really? And you know, I could be feeling a bit shit and I get yeah. a message from him. I'll be like, oh, shit, I'm great yeah. again. I just get, my mates just send me pictures of that guy, the black guy with a massive knob. Do you know what, <laughs> what I mean? Do you know what, <laughs> what I mean? The picture of the guy with a huge dick. <laughs> no. That's what, sorry. Do, he blatantly <laughs> does. He blatantly does. <laughs> you know what though, yeah? I haven't got WhatsApp, and I bet it's WhatsApp video. It is WhatsApp. Yeah. It is WhatsApp. And again, I deleted WhatsApp about yeah. 2017. Yeah. Because all I was getting on it was pure filth. Yeah. Or <laughs> someone getting murdered or shot or chopped up or yeah. some idiots it's going rank. at it. And then it does that thing where it saves it in your camera roll sometimes, and the kids were picking it up, and Dad, what's this? Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or, and they'd get me, wouldn't they, at the dinner table, I'd be in a restaurant, it'd be like... Uh, Someone you know and like press it, we go, ah! Oh, that's <laughs> oh, loud. The one, yeah, really, like, the, yeah. Oh, everyone's yeah, looking like that. Yeah. Oh, dude, I get that, that one all the time. Oh, 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 you know what Johnny is? Yeah, it's tremendous. So, yeah, got rid of WhatsApp. Yeah. Because um, a lot of things give me anxiety. Yeah. Well, WhatsApp was one of them. Really? Because there's so many all notifications. Bam, 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 filling all my memory up. And yeah. Just a lot of nonsense. And yeah. not, not one thing on that WhatsApp was ever useful to me in my life. It was just all bullshit videos and stuff. Yeah. Like you say, a lot of sex videos and yeah. someone getting chopped up or yeah. Yeah. someone getting run over or yeah. a robbery going on or someone running a mini digger into a cash machine. Yeah. Just a lot of shite, you know yeah. what I mean? That 
that I don't need to see. Yeah. And I find myself taking, like, you know the good thing on the iPhone is you see screen time, can't you? Oh, dude, it's embarrassing. Like, Mine's 20 embarrassing. hours a day online. Dude, it's embarrassing, <laughs> isn't it? Do you know what I say? I say to guys all the time, they say, oh, Paul, I haven't got time to do this meditation. I can't do this yoga. I can't go and work out. I'm like, look, look on your screen show me time. your screen time. It's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. Yeah. yeah. Dude, mine was how like seven and a half picked, hours. Yeah. How many pickups you picked your phone up? Like 168 times. Dude. Yeah. My kids are on my case now saying, Dad, put your phone down. Dad, put your phone up. Pay me some attention. Well, yeah. I, we've got a rule like no phones at the dinner table. Yeah. No phones on date night. Yeah. Have you two oldest kids got phones now? Me, no, I won't have it. I won't really? Have them. They've got iPads and stuff, so yeah. they're on the computers all day. Yeah. You know, watching videos, YouTube videos, yeah. or my daughter's doing TikTok videos and stuff. I'll do yeah. mine as well, yeah. But uh, they're not allowed phones. Yeah. They're the only kids in their school that hasn't got really? phones at their age. Isn't that crazy? I'm not having it because there's, there's too much influence on these phones, for one. Mm -hmm. You don't know who's ringing them and texting them, for yeah. two. And they're only kids for a short period of time. Yeah, you've got yeah, your whole dude. life to be an adult and have yeah, responsibilities dude. and phones and all that. Yeah, yeah. Now I know that companies are going to probably hate me for saying this, yeah, <laughs> but I think smartphones have destroyed the world. Mm. I think computer they have. phones. I think they've made people less social. Less social. I go out, yeah. Me and Paris, we, we do this little thing, yeah, where we go out and watch other people. Yeah. yeah, a lot of people do it, don't they? <laughs> yeah. Obviously. Yeah. Um, you see, like, people, these are on a first date, but they're on the phones, like, yeah. he's a good-looking man, she's fit as fuck, and they're, they're not talking to each other, yeah. they're just scrolling through Facebook. Or and then there'll be doing. a picture of the food. Yeah, yeah, a picture of the food. So there's no inter there's no, there's no intellect like there. There's no conversation yeah. going on. Yeah, yeah. And I think uh, it's a challenge for a lot of people not being able to hold a conversation. And that's what it is. It's you, People are becoming today where they can't talk to others because yeah. they're so reliant on... On the phone, it's like my mates. I've got mates, right, who would never approach a woman in a club or a bar or anything yeah. to chat her up or whatever. Yeah, just inbox her on Facebook. Well, or you don't even have to now. I talk to him about it all the time. You just got this Tinder shit, and well, you got all that. It's the best thing for single men and women in the it's world. It's unbelievable. I when I met my wife, I was sixteen. She was fourteen, which is insane. Same as us. I'm really. forty. 15, I'm forty this year. Sixteen. Really, it's crazy. Everyone think they're like they thought I was like thirty-two when she was fourteen, but. That wasn't the case, and I had to talk to her in a bar. I had to go over and talk what to her at a party. What was she doing in a bar at 14 and you said South Shields, bro. South Shields. Yeah. <laughs> South Shields, you do what you want. <laughs> I was working in the bar as a glass collector. You guys might know, you might not know this song. There's a song called The Gang Bang. We're having a gang bang. Basically, I got paid for pretending to hunt birds on a stage, and my future wife was in that bar, 14 years old. But I had to talk to her, and guys don't know how to do that now. Well... My mates now, I, I think it's a rejection thing as well, isn't it? Because oh, dude, if you go speak to a girl in a bar now or whatever, yeah. you might get rejected because yeah. years ago it'd be like, oh, try 20, you might get one. Yeah, You've yeah, heard yeah. One them, might be drunk enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You've heard the old time and say, and you got to say, I'll approach 50 women in a bar, yeah. one of them's going to say yes. <laughs> anyway, today it's like, I'm not getting rejected. Nah, but crazy. if you go on Instagram or Facebook or whatever they've got, yeah. text them if they're interested, yeah. they'll text back. And if they're not, yeah. You know, there's no, there's yeah. no let down. And I think, do you know, Tyson, I think we talk about anxiety. I think a lot of people suffer from this social anxiety simply because they don't know how to talk to people because of the phone. Because of the phone. Yeah. So, so all these people now, Tyson said this about the Instagram and all that. Yeah. yeah but oh, although it's a great thing because it keeps people connected, like Facebook, yeah. Instagram, Twitter, all these accounts. Yeah. Stuff, the accounts, things that I've, most of them I don't have any of. Yeah. There's so many now, aren't there? Snapchats, TikToks, don't have any yeah. of that. Um, it's good because it keeps people connected yeah. and you can see what everyone's doing from where they are yes but it also it also it keeps creates you, a lot of envy a lot of envy a lot of jealousy fear, fear of missing out yeah everyone's like oh I'm living my best life this is me this is how I live <laughs> living on a white sandy brinch drinking a thing but it's not real is it it's pretend isn't it yeah it is no one puts a picture of themselves having a shit do they or no. whatever <laughs> <laughs> or having a shave, you know what I mean? You know, my yeah, favorite ones. I'm just having a shave today. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, Dude, my favorite ones is when I'm someone's... just here. Like, I've got me nine to five job five days a week, yeah, yeah. which is quite boring actually. But yeah. you know, on the weekends, I'm gonna post my best good. life. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Dude, my so, favorite ones are when people pretend that so they're looking out at the sea 
and they pretend that they don't know that the other person's taking the photo. Those are by far my... I'm like, really? Or oh, they pretend they're asleep. How do you get a photo of yourself fucking sleeping? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, yeah. there's some crazy shit. So there is some there. crazy shit, and it does cause social anxiety. 100%. And it does... It, it is killing people's social skills. Mm-hmm. Because, mm-hmm. like I say, the art of chatting up now... I'm lucky I haven't been married for 25 years. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't know what to do. But, <laughs> yeah, it's like, you know, all this going online and all that. Oh, don't speak to him in real life. It's yeah. like, don't approach anybody. It's mad, do, isn't it? Do you know what? I've got friends where I say, right, you can't speak to women in bars, clubs and uh, restaurants and things because you might be done for social harassment and yeah. all that type of thing. It's mad. Like, what? Dude, it's mad, isn't it? And do you know... I think that this is also linked to boxing. This is probably why there's not many. That, there's not that many characters now, is there? That's why you stand out so much as well. Because why there's no many characters in boxing is because the sanctioning bodies are clamping down. They don't want characters. They don't want mavericks. They don't want people like me yeah. because they want. They keep keeping you in your fines and stuff all the yeah, time. Don't yeah, say yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, don't yeah. act like that. Yeah. Act like this. Fine, 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 fine. So yeah. if you keep doing stuff and you're getting fined all the time, you hit them in the pocket. They stop, don't they? So yeah, so yeah. it's uh I say be a maverick, be yourself, and let the true you shine. Dude, I love it. And what an amazing way to end the podcast, Mr. Tyson Fury. Thank, thank you so you much for your time, much. my friend. Thank if you. If anybody needs any social skills. <laughs> Tyson's got a course running. It starts, at, I think, December the 19th, he said. <laughs> what not to do. <laughs> I love it. Mate, thank you, so much thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate thank you. that. Brilliant. Did we get through all your questions you wanted? It was, it was amazing, huh?